Hi folks, welcome back to Public Speaking Online. Today, we're going to be talking about persuasive traditions or strategies, including persuasive appeals and other cultural traditions. You'll also be doing a brief activity where I show you a series of public service announcements or commercial advertisements. Your job will be to detect which appeal the designers and creators employed in order to craft their message. Finally, we'll go over a few logical fallacy types. So how do you get your audience to stick around long enough to listen to your speech? Well, Aristotle would say you would need to appeal to them. Basically, find out what their interests are, how they feel about certain topics, what makes them curious, Aristotle is often credited with sharing the three appeals and how we can appeal to our audience, ethos, pathos, and logos. There are, however, century-old other persuasive traditions that are important to acknowledge, and we'll get to those soon. So let's begin with ethos, which is essentially speaker credibility, or in other words, the ability of a speaker to show that they are in fact trustworthy. So how do you demonstrate that in a speech? First, to appear confident and competent. Speakers can share their expertise surrounding a topic and they can do so by talking about their own experiences, maybe talking a little bit about their education, credentials, knowledge, training, or even skills in a certain area. Next, to showcase trustworthiness, a speaker can present accurate, credible, and balanced arguments. Finally, they can present with something called dynamism, which some have referred to as sort of an outgoing personality trait, but truly it's when audiences perceive a speaker as either charismatic, passionate, or simply energetic. I know, you might be asking, so why the, the Katy Perry picture? Well, because it's a prime example of the ways that advertising companies use celebrities in hopes to bolster their own credibility. So if Katy Perry eats pop chips and she's famous, I don't know. So let's pause and ask ourselves. If ethos is achieved by demonstrating competence, trustworthiness, and dynamism, which one of those dimensions do you think is most important when searching for a speaker's credibility and why? Let's then move to pathos. Pathos is Latin for emotions. When engaging in this persuasive strategy, a speaker intentionally stirs up the emotions of their audiences by focusing their attention on things like the audience's beliefs, values, or feelings around a certain topic. So the speaker strives for a personal connection, something that will elicit strong emotions in their message. And a good speaker understands that we often, as human, react to situations and even make decisions with our hearts and our emotions before our mind really kicks in with the logic and demands facts. So we have to be careful here. Too much emotion in a speech and the audience is completely overwhelmed and turned off. But the right amount of emotion in a speech can position the audience in a space where they are more receptive to your message. Think, for example, of late night Sarah McLaughlin old PSAs, right? 3 a.m., sad song, adopt a puppy, you're a jerk if you don't, that kind of thing. Finally, the last of the appeals is logos or logic. And this appeal is shown when a speaker uses stats, facts, data, evidence, research from reputable sources to support their major claims. Good persuasive speakers know the importance too of acknowledging counter arguments or counterpoints to their claims and even reserving some of their speech time for exploring what the refuting side might say. Beware, however, because fallacies do in fact undermine this appeal. So can you name that appeal? Feel free to pause this video and take a look at each one of these advertisers' attempts 
to engage a particular appeal in order to support their cause. How about this one? Or this ad that came out in the UK just a few years ago. Now let's move to talking about other persuasive traditions. From the article, let them know, African American rhetoric and the art of persuasion, we learn that there are several persuasive traditions and techniques, for example, call and response, signifying, tonal semantics, and narrative sequencing. So let's start with call and response. Allow me to share a quote. In her book, Talking and Testifying, The Language of Black America, Smitherman describes call and response as, quote, the spontaneous verbal and nonverbal interaction between speaker and listener in which all of the speaker's statements or calls are punctuated by expressions, responses, from the listener. Call and response is frequently accompanied by repetition, a technique that's also used in many Korean communities. And often the response is drawn from the speaker's appeal to the audience's emotion, or again, some pathos. Now, if you Google Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s speech, how long, not long, you will see this persuasive and audience engaging technique in perfect form. Next is signifying. Henry Louis Gates Jr. defines this technique as stylized wordplay or making a point through indirection and wit, highlighting truths through irony and humor. A speaker is able to relate to the audience in a way they will understand, logos, and also solidifies when given premise matters to the listener. Frederick Douglass's speech, entitled What to the Slave is the Fourth of July, is often an example of this strategy in motion. Tonal semantics refers to, and I quote, the use of voice rhythm and inflection to convey meaning by using one's voice like a musical instrument. The voice is used in sing-song patterns to engage an audience in a way that words alone, on paper, or even a slide, simply cannot do. Reverend Al Sharpton's 2014 speech in Ferguson is a prime example of this oratory tradition. I encourage you to Google it and take a look. And finally, we have narrative sequencing, which grew out of the tradition of storytelling within the Black community. According to author Frazier, stories, both real and imagined, are used to illustrate, emphasize, validate, and persuade, as well as engage the appeals, as good stories do. Here, a speaker may begin with a story, a personal testimony, and perhaps juxtapose their message alongside recollections of their past experiences. And you've done some of this work already in your personal anecdote speech this semester. So now let's talk a little bit about logical fallacies, which can undermine and disrupt all of the traditions in motion. I'm sure you've heard of slippery slope. If we allowed A to happen, then B, and eventually Z. So for example, if you don't study tonight for two hours, your grades will suffer, and then you won't graduate with honors, which means you're not getting into the school of your dream. Now, we know that's just not the case. So be careful to avoid slippery slopes. Or what about ad hominem, which any exposure to the media would showcase? Ad hominem is simply attacking someone's character in order to undermine their argument. So we can think, for example, about false attacks made towards celebrities and that are often taken out of context. What about false cause? This is where just because two things are related doesn't mean that one causes another to occur. And here's one of my favorite examples of this fallacy. There's this idea, actually it's been proven, that more babies are born every year in the city where the Super Bowl team won than any other city. Of course, nine months later. So we could, 
suggest that the Super Bowl makes people pregnant? Of course not. Super Bowl doesn't cause pregnancy, but they are in fact related. Now, these were just a few that we went over today, and there are so many more. Red herring, bandwagoning, hasty generalization, and the list goes on and on. The final page of this module has many resources, including sites that both define and explain many of the logical fallacies that we didn't get to today. The important thing is that you understand that it's important to avoid fallacies as a speaker at all costs, as they truly do damage a speaker's credibility. That then brings us to the end of our presentation today. Thank you, and I hope it helped.